<laughs> okay, so my first question for you is when I came in here, I asked to go to the bathroom, and the very first thing I saw was a sign in the bathroom stall that said, fast fact, Ripple is not the same as XRP, and then a small explanation. <laughs> really? Yeah. So See, I've not been to the ladies' room, I wouldn't <laughs> know that. Ripple, whose digital asset XRP has bounced up to briefly become the number two cryptocurrency twice already this fall, has its headquarters in San Francisco, California. Ripple owns 60 billion in XRP, with 55 billion of that currently locked up in escrow. So as working here, would you consider it a corporate environment? This is a very different environment than I've worked in in the past. What really got me is my first few weeks here, I'd go to leave the building and I'd go to hit the badge to badge. You can badge in, right? When I was badging out, there's nothing to hit. But I realized what really goes on at this company is the focus is on getting your job done, not keeping attendance. You know what your objectives are, you know what your key results are supposed to be for the quarter, and that's entirely our focus. What's it like here? <laughs> What's the office like here? Well, you know, so it's classic Silicon Valley open. Engineers gonna work whatever way they wanna work. These are competitive days. You gotta make your workplace fun or people are gonna wanna work there. We've got, we've got these corporate values, right? Lego. Yeah. All right? Lego. Live it, enjoy it, get it done, go for it, own it. It's fun to work with people who wanna hustle and get stuff done, but also kind of hold each other accountable to finish that work. So I noticed in your interview, one of the things that you said that needed to happen here is about investor protection regulation. You said specifically, we need more investor protections and they can't come fast enough. Could you elaborate a little more on that? In the long history of finance, as long as there have been sort of new ways to make money, there have been crooks who show up to try to steal some of that money. And we certainly see it in everything. We saw it in atomic energy. We saw it in the oil and gas sector way back at when. We certainly saw it in the dot-com era. We saw it in subprime financing. And we've seen it in the world of crypto. We've seen these, these uh, really sleazy offerings that look like they're not actually trying to start businesses, but just separate people from their money. The SEC has stepped in, investor protections have emerged all around the world for this, but it can't happen fast enough because it makes it harder for those of us who are pursuing legitimate technological solutions using these technologies to do the things we want to do when there's all these kind of bad things happening around the periphery. So one thing I've noticed about just coming up to the office here is that you're surrounded by banks. Right down there is, is where there was the first Bank of America building before that was called Bank of Italy. It was founded by AP Giannini. The plaza behind us is AP Giannini Plaza. Now, you know, he changed into Bank of America and his headquarters is still there. And so it's kind of cool that we're sort of building the future of banking and banking software right here in the space. The XRP ledger is decentralized because no organization or individual has any legal right or ability to control it. Every participant enforces every single rule and the system is governed by all of its participants. David Schwartz, a rather unlikely cheerleader in any other sense, considers himself a cheerleader for the XRP ledger. I, I think while proof of work has kind of proven to be a dead end and hasn't produced any technological innovations of any significance, nor has, has it's produced actually increasing centralization in the systems based on it, uh, there's a lot of work to improve the decentralization and improve the robustness of systems based on distributed agreement protocols. Historically, the XRP ledger, as the stakeholders have broadened, has become more decentralized and the influence of any single participants has reduced, and we would expect that only to continue over time. It's really clear to us uh, that XRP is not a security, and XRP's relationship to Ripple is proof of that. But maybe more importantly, you've also got XRP. You can buy all the XRP you want. It doesn't give you the rights to a dime of the company's profits or earnings per share or dividends. It doesn't give you a single share or any interest in the future of this company. And God forbid, if this company were to go away, it'd be a very sad day for the Johnson family but it wouldn't make a bit of difference to XRP. XRP continues to exist separate from the company Ripple, and so for that reason, I think when the SEC takes a good hard look at this, and we know that they're starting to do some of that work, they're gonna recognize, I suspect, that uh, XRP is so clearly not a security. 
So what do you think the environment is like working here at Ripple as opposed to banks? I mean, basic things like, do people have to come here at 9 a.m.? Is there a dress code? You know, how does it change from working at, you know, Merrill Lynch? We are driven by what we have to get done, not mm -hmm. how you do it. So if you want to do it in flip-flops or you want to do it doing wingtips, it doesn't really matter. We use a measure here called OKRs, which is a kind of standard Silicon Valley uh, metric for um, knowing exactly what your key results, your objectives and key results are going to be for the quarter. And so every person who works here, everyone, has a list of OKRs. And if we all meet these goals, the company will proceed uh, towards success. So importantly, we've got three products, right? So we've got X Current, which is our oldest product in the market, the longest, mm -hmm. X Rapid, which is fairly new to the market, and then X Via, very, very new. And so our, our, I would expect our, our rollout would be, most of it will be X Current, a little bit will be X Rapid, and even less will be X Via. Now, over time, that might change, but initially, the oldest stuff gets the most traction because customers have had a chance to look at it the longest and get used to the idea more quickly. So similarly, what countries are they going to go into? I think they're going to go to those places where they're ready for a change, but where there's not some actual use. So if you look, for example, we just did a, uh, some announcements around some partners who are going to be trading, who are already trading in XRP in U.S., in Mexico, in the Philippines. Now, India and China have banned the use of crypto in most uh, cases, but in Mexico and the Philippines, those are countries where there's a lot of uh, remittance payments going out of other countries and into Mexico and the Philippines, and there's a lot of trade in XRP. So I think we're gonna see a lot of adoption of our products in those countries. We're already seeing that. Okay, so I also noticed from the sign on the bathroom stall that you guys have yoga classes. The yoga classes happen in here, apparently. And you have like the free stuff. It's Silicon Valley, writ large. I'm a big fan of the grapefruit. I go through half a dozen a day. When they find out this stuff is bad for you, I'm toast. <laughs> but, you know, I think it's expected in Silicon Valley, you, you know, you, you, you're here, you work all day, you, you work all night, you're here early, you stay late. At least free water, free snacks, we have meals together. We think that what we're doing is really important. We think that, you know, you can just be cynical and say we're, we're making software for banks to lower their costs of doing business. Or you can think about all of the businesses we're going to enable. You can think about all the people who, who you know, work hard to send money home to their families, only to give up mostly in fees to banks. When it comes to moving money across borders, we've been pretty focused on just that for some time now, and that I think it's given us a head start. So I saw this thing on Reddit where a Redditor commented saying that he had this idea going on something Brad Garlinghouse said where Ripple should have a person carry cash physically from New York to London and see if it can beat Swift, you know, door to door. Is that something you guys would ever want to test out? Fundamentally, the fastest way to move money is put in a suitcase right now, and that's ridiculous. And that's the, those are the age we live in. And frankly, the biggest problems are not from New York to London. The biggest problems are if you're going Thai Bot to South African Rand, or if you're trying to move money from Japan to Brazil. I mean, these are places where a lot of commerce happens, but it takes a very long time to move the money, and it's really slow, and there are a lot of errors. That's ridiculous in, a, in an era. I mean, you and I send text messages to friends overseas in seconds. You send an email with an attachment with an Excel spreadsheet with all kinds of important data in seconds, but it takes days to move money. That's, that's crazy, and that, it causes businesses to lose business, and it raises the cost for individuals moving money back to their families. There's, you know, there's three floors, so how often does everyone get together? That's important. There were two floors only a few weeks ago. We are growing like crazy. We've got offices all over the world, literally, in, in, uh, here in San Francisco, in New York, in London, in Luxembourg, in Mumbai, in Sydney. We've got joint partners in, in Japan. This is a global operation. We're really trying to focus on the places where we can uh, provide help with our software. And it's a fun place to work, and we're trying to make sure it's a fun place to work because we want to bring the best and the brightest. This is, this is kind of trippy. The golden ratio, all right? Yeah. So it's symbolized by phi, this uh, uh, Greek symbol. But the golden ratio is, it's, it's a math, uh, A plus B over B, mm -hmm. when it equals A over B is what? Well, it's about 1.61809897. If you pull out those, those geometric differences in those circles, mm -hmm. you end up with these Fibonacci sequences. Organized a different way, you start to see network structure where you've got uh, hubs and you've got uh, less important hubs in a network. And so out of that, we create a logo called the Triskelion, which is our uh, uh, Ripple logo. Uh, but it really does come out of that mathematic principle of the golden ratio. Cointelegraph. 
like, subscribe, and hodl.